Hello fellas and files, Film Guru here. So for those who are new to the channel, my name's Sean, also known as Film Guru, and I've started this channel I'll only have my same particular movies, TV shows, and variety of other film content. So thanks for joining me today. So today I'll be looking at Don't Breathe 2. This was directed by Rodo C8 and stars Stephen Lang, Brendan Saxon III, and Madeline Grace. So this takes the, the blind man character and sort of shows him in a different light. How he, he must use his military training to save an, a young orphan from a group of thugs who break into his home. So taking over directing here is Rodo, who ultimately worked with Fide Alvarez in crafting the first film where Alvarez directed that one. Now Rodo's taken over as directing duties and I really like what he crafts here. A very interesting, engaging and somewhat brutal film. What I thought was really clever about the film is you take this blind man character who in the first one's an antagonist who's you know, these young kids break into his home and he's, they're trying to defend themselves against this guy and he, isn't, and he really isn't a nice guy or a good guy at all. And then they shift that in this film and sort of show him more as a protagonist, a, a character who's willing to do anything to save this young girl that he really str has a strong bond with. And it sort of makes him a much more endearing character in a lot of ways. And this really is a, a redemption story for his character. He feels bad for the things he's done and he's trying to redeem himself. And he goes above and beyond to do that. And I really like that aspect to this character. He's damaged and scarred. And he's sort of trapped in his own world. And Phoenix, the young girl, is the only thing that sort of he really connects to and has attachment with. And I kind of like that aspect. I thought it was really smart to do this as a sequel. When I first heard of they were going to do a sequel, I wasn't sure how they are going to go about it. But I really love what they've done here. I like the world that they've built and the continuation of the story that they, they crafted in the first film. I think all the acting is really, really great here. I think Madeline Grace, who plays Phoenix, is really good. She has some great moments in the film. You really feel a connection with her and you want to see her survive and you see how capable and strong she truly is and I really love that about her character. And she's only the one who gets kidnapped by these, these thugs and, and there's a whole twist and turn with her story and I kind of thought it was interesting. It was like shifting the focus to her rather than just the blind man. Brendan Saxon III is fine here. He's not great, but he's fine. But I think the real standout here, in my opinion, is Stephen Lang. He's fantastic here. This is the best role I think I've seen him do. He's a unique and sort of odd actor who does really obscure characters a lot of the time. This felt like something he could really sink his teeth into. And he really delivers here on so many aspects. As this caring sort of guy for the young girl, then when she's taken, the violence he inflicts on the men responsible and the lengths he goes to save the girl is just extraordinary to watch. And he really has sort of this Rambo moment in the end where he uses all the skills that he's had to get her back, but the way he goes about it, the techniques he uses, the weaponry he has, it sort of has this real hero moment for him. And at the, I really love the third act with him and what he, go, what he goes through to get her back, I really love. And he has this really great speech at the end where he talks about who he is as a person and that he's not a good guy and all these sort of things. And he feels regretful and bad for the things he's done. It cements him as a character you kind of care for which is strange to say, but that's how I feel about the character. I was really engaged and really enjoyed his performance here. I thought he was so great. And this film really is what Rambo could have been. I was really impressed with this film. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I just thought it would be sort of trying to capitalize on the first film, but it, was, it created its own thing, a unique story. We still had the same character, but he was sort of different than when we first met him in the first film, and I liked that. I like the direction the film goes in. I like a lot of what unfolds here. The motives behind why these thugs are kidnapping her is revealed and it's quite a shocking twist and I kind of like that. There's so many things I really liked about this film, some really great sequences. One of my favorite sequences is where the thugs come into the house to try and find the girl and we sort of follow her as she's trying to hide from them. And the camera moves with her. She goes on the bed, she goes in and around cupboards and the camera stays with the whole time. And this really, the fluentness of the camera really made these sequence really fascinating to watch and really created suspense here in the simplest of ways. I like the practicality that Roto uses here and there's a little bit of visual effects, but most of, mostly the practicality here I think is really effective and it makes it sort of a much simpler story. The third act is just 
the most brutal thing I've seen in a while. The violence is really brutal in this movie. And the, the violence of the blind man inflicts on these men is so brutal. It was a little too violent for me, yeah. but I still enjoyed certain aspects of these particular sequences as well. I also like that the, the villains in this film weren't kind of the sort of cliched characters we usually see. They were as good as they could have been. Villains, there isn't a lot to them. There isn't a lot of depth at all. I don't think they were really great villains at all. You know anything about them, and, and even though those things revealed at the end, it still really didn't say who they really were. And I felt that was a little disappointing. Where the first film, you had these young kids that we t to focus on, and then you had the blind man, and, and what a great villain he is to go up against. And I just felt that he really deserves better villains, I think, in this film than, he, than what we got. The young girl in the film, Phoenix, she sort of seems ultimately seems okay with things there's all these sort of trauma and, and violence and things she goes through and experiences but she always seems okay with it there are se sequ don't get me wrong there are sequences in it where she is shocked by what she sees but this is acceptance to it which i guess is a sort of a strength but it just felt a bit odd but overall besides those couple of things i, I did enjoy the movie i was really blown away by it actually and it really has a lot of heart which i was really surprised by final thoughts this film is really about Redemption, seeking redemption for things that people have done that they feel regretful for. And trying to become a better person, but realizing deep down that they can't change who they are. I'm gonna give Don't Breathe 2 four out of five. I really honestly enjoyed this. I was surprised by it and really impressed by what they're able to accomplish here. And like I said, Stephen Lang is fantastic. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit subscribe down at the bottom. Follow me on Facebook and Letterboxd. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.